I rewatched that genuine entrance the other day of him when he went on 106 and he came out in a stretcher. This is for one of the performances. I yes, I, I do remember. remember. He That's... came out in the stretcher and then his boy goes, oh no, he's flatlining y'all. The only way we can bring him back is with chest compressions. And then they do the chest compressions and genuine does this shit on the fucking and then he comes back to life and sings Pony. It's the what King are you shit. talking about? King shit. King shit. And we were just like, I guess it's Thursday because genuine. Fuck you. You had it all, baby. And you let it. You let yeah. it go. Damn. Chili's, Chili's, baby back ribs. There it is. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another phenomenal episode of My Mama Told Me. The podcast where we dive deep into the pockets of black conspiracy theories. And we finally work to prove that Chiwetel Ejiofor is the most famous man on the planet whose name no one knows how to pronounce. That motherfucker is unbelievably famous for everybody to be like, what is his name? I do not know it. I've never known it and I never will know it because of how hard that motherfucker is. You're right. You're right. Yeah. His face is great. Name great another. Because even even Jimin, we figured out Jimin. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we yeah, we yeah, all yeah. figured out like, okay, Jimin Hansu. That's we, a start. Yeah. yeah. We, that's I'm a start. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and Papa Midnight and Constantine. A lot, of good, a lot of big roles. <laughs> Come yeah, on. Yeah. They put blue contacts on them and nobody said nothing. That that was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Chi Wattel got a Marvel movie and a slave movie. And we, <laughs> that's like the two biggest Bro. black man movies. And I don't I, I don't know how to say the last name. Yeah. I don't think that I, I don't I mean I think you have to like commit to demanding people know it. Yeah, right. I think he's a little too like you know chill about. However, like Raven coming out at like thirty five and saying my last name is Simone, we don't care. We yeah, called him Raven Simone shit. our whole life. No, you can't I'm, do that now. You had your chance. You get the feeling he was on set. Like you just call me Chiwe. It's good. And then yeah, it's like, exactly. <laughs> and then it's like no, 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 no. You got to stand on that. Yeah, shit. he's Uzo like Aduba was like, listen. I don't give a fuck. You can say Charlize Theron. Yeah. yeah. Figure it out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Gotta stand I, I on like business. that. I but like that. But she came out, she came out and did that from the start yeah. to, the, to the bigger point. She yeah. said, this is who the fuck I am. And I ain't, I may not even be here that long, but you're going to learn to pronounce this motherfucker. Right. And instead, she would tell, was like, hey, edgy's fine. Call me edgy. I don't know. <laughs> it don't matter. It Just don't happy matter. to be here. Yeah. <laughs> And the hard thing about the Raymond thing is it's gone so far that, like, we don't believe it. Mm. You know what I mean? I was like, I believe yeah. it, but I don't want to believe it. Yeah, it's, no. it's, it's a little too bougie a and little, random. Yeah, yeah. Too little With too Simone, late. Simone, yeah, I don't buy nah, it. And she's done too many weirdo sh- things before this where, like, I don't trust your opinion on nothing, lady. There's yeah, no exactly. like thing you could tell me where I'd take it as a hundred percent true. She said exactly. she was from every country in Africa except two, and every country in Europe except two, or something. <laughs> she was literally from half the planet. Here's my question: Is what sorry. were the two? It was like, sorry, DRC, you ain't making sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, I, I'm not. Listen, one thing I'm not is Kenyan. Everything yeah. else, yeah. I'm fucking. I bet she would claim Kenya just because Kenya gets a lot of press for no They're reason. cool. Yeah, they're a cool. I'm, shut up. No, from. I don't mean that. I'm sorry. That was <laughs> where's exactly. Amber Rose from again? Denver? I mean, not, yeah, not uh, there. I, I mean, know. like, where's the, the black part she says she, she claimed? Oh, oh I don't know. even know. Did she claim Africa? I didn't know she did that. She, because she went on a little run where she was saying she wasn't black no more. She had a, a, a little recent run where she was Cape like, Verdean. There you go. Oh, okay. Oh, Verdian. that's a okay. good one. There's yeah. a lot of countries in Africa that nobody's going to follow up on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's just like, a, yeah, say you're Namibian. Who's going who's yeah, to say anything? Who's going to stop yeah. you? 
our guests today, you've already heard their voice. This is a, it's a phenomenal time. We're, we're excited he's here. Uh, you know him from a lot of cool shit. You know him, rap shit on uh, HBO Ma- Max. It ain't, I ain't no HBO I think no more. Shut the Max, fuck up, man. HBO. I can't keep up. I yeah, it, it, it's Max, but but it's a it's a show, a great show that he's a part of. He also hosts a podcast called The Read uh, yeah. that you can listen to anywhere and everywhere. And, and that's the whole shebang. And we're so excited he's here. Give it up for Kid Fury, everybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am sunny L.A. Sunny L.A., uh, yeah. we're glad you're here. You came to us, I should say, with a conspiracy theory that we softened up a little bit. And that's <laughs> not because we're afraid of the conversation. Let me be, be very clear about that. Yeah. We, we, we are not afraid of the conversation. And in fact, I encourage you right away to get into what inspired this conversation. Right. But we have covered a fair amount of this individual on the podcast. And so we wanted to make sure that we broaden it a little bit to make sure that we're not <laughs> exclusively a Bow Wow podcast from this point forward. But Bow Wow is such a liar. <laughs> let's go let's go go crazy I'm excited that, he's like the centerpiece of the conspiracy <laughs> podcast that's insane he's the he, he is a vital source for this podcast I would yeah, say yeah it comes yeah. up Fuck Mr. 106 in Park. He's just me, Mr. My Mama Tone. <laughs> can I also say he's my least favorite male host of 106 in Park was he ever actually a host yeah. I think they ran out of options and then they were like hey brother you wanna check Hey, you right. want to keep coming back? Because you seem you seem to be hanging out anyway. You just want to. <laughs> I'm a I'm an AJ guy from way After back. After Tigger, I stopped paying attention. Tigger, what Tigger was it? I I did fuck with AJ. I, I was like devastated AJ. to find out that the dreads were not real. That that you hurt me. Knew that. You, you knew, knew the whole that. time. You knew the whole juicing. time. I did not. You're I, lying if you tell me you knew the whole time, bro. They were I too. Ugly. There was a lot of dread. That was a lot of dread, it was <laughs> which so makes much- it even crazier <laughs> because he was sitting down every day to get 30 pounds of dread sewn in. <laughs> Why? That's crazy. You Why? You suffer for your art. For a rabid pack of 13-year-olds from the Bronx who are there to see Petey Pablo. Psycho. Insane. For for a fucking freestyle Friday, you had to put new dreads in? That was a big day. Don't be like that. Shout out to my man, Blind Fury. (laughs) <laughs> have you ever rewatched any Blind Fury? Of course, I've rewatched re- re- I, YouTube Supercuts. It's it's. It, I'll be honest. He's one of the worst rappers that have ever reached that level of success. Yeah. Hey, you know what though? He was blind as hell. Can't say he that was about blind. TV. He was blind as shit. You see him this up there? will never get back. <laughs> yeah. He was, that dude was blind as fuck. We'll never get an no. opportunity like that again. It was no, so. It was no. such a beautiful time, and we didn't know what we had. We didn't. Kid, you came to us with a conspiracy theory that somehow uh, sparked whatever that conversation was, but you said, my mama told me. Child stars are all victims. And I should say specifically, you guided this conversation through your your uh, a conspiracy theory about Lil Bow Wow. Mm-hmm. Tell us everything you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the year was probably around approximately two thousand and oh God had to be somewhere between one and four. Mm. It's anyway. early. It's early. Early 2000s. I think this was before the towers fell. You mm. know what? It might have been. This is like a while ago. Bow Wow yeah. was still low. I don't even know if he was like Mike yet. No, yeah, I don't no, think it, so. that, that was a few years into the journey, I think. Yeah. I mean, he was uh, doing great. He was just kind of like at the peak of his like heart throb pop stardom. And I go to school one day minding my goddamn business. <laughs> Not really expecting much out of anything besides, you know, like bullying and humidity. It's my sure, <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> and for whatever reason, the talk on the on the town or in the high school halls was, "Did you hear what happened about?" Mm. And 
The story went that he was unfortunately assaulted yeah. sexually in a limousine by his own security guard. Yes. And there were graphic um, <laughs> additions to the story, some involving like stitching. That's, that's yes. what I heard. That's what you I know, heard. You know, sewing things back together. A blowout, if you will. Yeah, as a, uh, a gay man, I really relate. Um, <laughs> I have no comment. Empathize. Yeah, so I remember just going to school and hearing that, and and there was a lot of celebrity gossip that went around as, as you know, you're a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, a big one for us was also Trina and Missy Elliott being a couple. That one might not have been untrue, but either way. I think they I that think would have been pretty cool for sure. That, that don't, one that don't seem pretty of, cool. That would be cool. And yeah. it it would explain why there are so few collaborations. Uh. <laughs> but I remember hearing this one and going, "Huh? Like mm. why isn't this on the news? Why right. haven't we heard from an official source about yeah. something so tragic, violent, heinous, unspeakable. And I never really got an answer for that. So no. you you are told this in the in the hallways in between being bullied by by I assume Haitian men. Uh, <laughs> All right, a couple Bahamians. Okay. Uh and and then and you hear this and your immediate instinct is nah I, this feels silly. This is absurd. It just it it felt way too wild and random to me. Yeah. But it, it, I remember thinking also, like, where do we come up with these? Right. Who's, who's the person who's like, I'm going to get this shit kicked off. <laughs> That's and a how good does question. it make the waves? Because the powerful thing about this story for me was that I think the following summer, I went down uh, to visit my family in Jamaica, as I did quite often in the summertime as a kid. And my uh, two of my uncles, who are around the same age as me, my granddaddy was fast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Salute. You know, I'm not mad at him. Rest in peace. <laughs> we go down there and we're, you know, kicking the shit, climbing trees, eating mangoes. And they asked me if Bow Wow was okay because they heard about him. <laughs> and I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> I said, nigga, running water is like yeah, questionable yeah. around these spots. How the fuck do you know about this Bow Wow rumor? Buddy, you can't be focusing on Bow Wow right now. You got other problems. This isn't it. Uh, I like that they knew that you would have a direct line. Like, you would be like, actually, he's doing well. As the American. <laughs> like, yeah. I was actually with him in the hospital last week. He's healing up fine. Let me text him. <laughs> We don't have texting yet. Hey, and the new second. the new record, it's a banger. You're gonna yeah, love right. it. <laughs> you just don't know the way he moves so fast. Yeah, so you're not buying it, Bori. You we're all of a similar age. What you heard this around the same time? Did yep. you believe it? No, I didn't in. believe it. I remember it was in junior high school, and this kid on my wrestling team who smelled very bad. Sure, very bad. His name was Wilt. He told me, oh, and he no. said, he said, <laughs> he's not going to listen. Of he's, he's no, dead. I just mean it's sad that a <laughs> oh. man was named Wilt. At and this smelled thing. poorly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was a boy at the time, but that's how I know. That's how I can put the date on it. Because I remember the junior high school I was at, because I went to a lot of schools. And he told me that it was in the limo by his limo driver. Right. And that there was like, I think he said, if, I rem if my memory serves, I think he said 32 stitches. Yeah. Which, even as a little boy, I was like, this is, I was just like, this is, how did this get to Will? You know yeah. what I mean? Of like, how did this trickle down all the way that sticky ass Wilt knows? But also, how is it that Wilt is the number one source of Bow Wow information coming out of this specific area? Like, that doesn't fucking make sense. You know, the craziest part about it, Wilt, shocker, white guy. Mm. It was okay. a white guy. Okay. 
That explains a couple of things. There. I was about to say, that starts to make this feel like there. an intentional sort of like uh, Reagan moving crack through the community kind of vibes. Mm. That's how it, that is. It felt like a plant because it was also like nobody else was talking about. He was the only one who said it to me. Yeah. Because I remember being like, ah, oh, what the fuck is he talking about? And then going about my, because he told me in the morning and then going about my day. No black people said anything about it to me all day. But I still remember Wilt telling me that. Well, here's what I'll say. If I am a, a president of the United States and I'm watching this young upstart, Lil Bow Wow, start to make waves with young men and young women uh, in a way that we haven't seen in a millennia. This yeah. motherfucker was was Michael Jackson again, level famous. And he wasn't was really that talking. Big? He and was big, started? bro. He was huge. We, I think I we forget I how that. fucking big Bow Wow was. He was unbelievably large. And he's not talking about drugs. He ain't talking about alcohol. He's about having a, a cool kind of fun that niggas can relate to. But and he it still isn't, had like gangster connects because he yes. was introduced by way of Snoop. Yes. Come on. So he still had like street cred, even though he was four. Bro, yeah. <laughs> you could still have him in the back of the video and it wasn't like corny. It wasn't crazy. He's a powerful figure in society. If I want to take that figure down, I got to start telling people he got butt sexed. I think that there's something here <laughs> along with the, you know, putting them in dresses, putting yeah. us in dresses to take our, our power and strength. Come on. They're, they're like, the way to attack the black community. And their fervor. Yeah. This is, take down this power here's, here is my question, though. And I do wonder this, because this is truly a cross-country phenomenon right now. We have Miami to Chicago to Washington State. The fact that we all heard limo, the specificity of it does make you wonder, how did, the, how did this happen so, such a specific, so specifically? Like, doesn't that feel crazy to you? Yeah, that it that the rumor itself is so uh, like you would tight. think it would telephone a little bit to yeah. where you heard in Miami, maybe you heard limo. By the time it got to me, it was like Snoop Dogg's hot tub or yeah, something. Yeah, right. Like 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 you know what it I mean? It was a Hummer too. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Like the idea that it was a limo, and I heard driver. You both heard security, so a little bit different. But the yeah. specificity of it is interesting to me. It is very interesting to me as well. But I'm also starting to think, because it seemed to take so much life in the school system, mm. I'm wondering if there was just, like, a rival child star parent uh -oh. that <laughs> lost a job <laughs> to this kid and was like, Every opportunity I get. Because uh, listen, I'm a whistleblower. I'll say it. Do you think this was a masterpiece situation? I was about to say, there's a man named Percy Miller who had a lot to gain during this era. Come and, on. And could not afford to lose. Come on. And Romeo <laughs> did not have what it took. He I'll, didn't I'll have say it. it. Stacked up, it was no competition. He didn't have it. They were still fake beefing on that damn uh, reality show. They were uh, kids of sisterhood of hip hop. Yeah, show hip hop. <laughs> hip hip hop. I'm ashamed to, to know that, but it's true. <laughs> no, I know what you're talking about. But yeah, also, can no. we, can we, can we, we can all agree, Lil Romeo did not have it like Lil Bow Wow had it. Have what? Yeah. Exactly. No, he, exactly. That was no show. He had a Nickelodeon man. show, I believe. <laughs> Boo! And his dad gave him that. That wasn't, yeah. that wasn't a, a well-earned, you know, position. He had J.C. Penny shoes. Lil Romeo was trash. Yeah, yeah he was shoes? bad. Yeah, they were very bad. They oh, were... he did have... Yeah, very nice. bad. Very, yeah. very bad. Fuck, that way had no damn shoes. Listen, but Man Bow Wow owns. was a king. Do, do you own a do-rag? I bet Bow Wow sees a cut of it. I bet... <laughs> I bet you, I bet you paying Bow Wow right now. You, you be careful with the way you speak about Bow Wow on this podcast. Let, let us be, let us be frank and upfront about this. He is a historical figure that we value very much. I don't value him. <laughs> we don't respect him, but we value him very much. Uh, and we don't want to besmirch. We need him to make it on this podcast so that we can finally uh, make uh, this whole thing whole. <laughs> if you say so, <laughs> that would be crazy. 
<laughs> but I won't come out here and tell y'all 20 more lies. So. <laughs> Big lies. Big, yeah. crazy Big lies. Big. Life the show. I'm on a jet <laughs> right now. <laughs> so I really don't know what happened with Bow Wow. If anything traumatic or just wild ever happened in a limo and it just took on a life of his own. But I never really believed this particular rumor. Clearly, some things have taken place in in, in that, that young man's life to lead him to where he is today, though. So. Well, I'm really I'm glad you said that. I actually think this is the perfect transition. We're going to take a break because when we come back, I actually did a bunch of research on that that very subject and might have some answers uh, as to what happened to Bow Wow and others. Uh, I did some research on a few others as well. So we'll we'll take a break. We'll be back with more Kid Fury and more. My mama told me. We are back, and we are talking all things Lil Bow Wow, Limousine. No. Listen, we're back. (laughs) I mean, we are. It's It's, it's going where it's going. It's It's going. Yeah, it's going where it's going. We're talking. Yeah. Legs to get it back on the rails. This is why you do what you do, and I do what I do. Yeah, no. Hey, we all play different positions out here. Uh, (laughs) As far as Bow Wow being sexually assaulted by his security guard and or his limo driver, which we all agree was very a variant of the rumor. But he did a recent interview, somewhat recent interview on Vlad TV, where Vlad, the hero in this story, outright asked him if he was ever raped. Jesus Christ. Vlad would be the one to do it. uh, Yeah, that's sort of what the fuck man like you don't got no morals inside of this where you don't you don't even like see him as a human being at all enough to be like well i'm not just gonna ask him on camera if he was raped as a child but vlad did cool <laughs> that sucks <laughs> yeah. dj vlad known for his tact and respect yeah for others. He really loves the black community and he shows it every day. But he outright asks him and Bow Wow tells him that it's uh, fucking ridiculous. He says he has no clue where that even started. And he goes on to say that he first heard the rumors while walking through an airport in Paris and was so flabbergasted by it that he actually called a radio station or multiple radio stations to put it on record that that's not true. Skirt. Okay. I hear what you're saying. Yep. There is a history of people calling radio stations lying. <laughs> that is... You have to acknowledge that if the radio station is the first place you go to clear the air, yeah. sometimes it, you, it gives a Ray J vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, also, it... I just smacked Fab in the club. You know what I mean? <laughs> Was he, like, 14 when he called them? What? Yeah. That, this was yeah. a long time ago. It was a yeah, was really a long time ago. very young man. And was apparently on the radio being like, that's not true. He had to be like 12 or 13 because we're the same age, I'm pretty sure. Let me check up how old. Was it Parisian radio? I ain't never hear no goddamn <laughs> interview of him talking about this. So- I'm glad I'm glad you asked that because this is what makes it even crazier. He claims that he called a radio station in Philly. So like he he's in Paris. This is pre any version of international calling on cell phones and shit and spends hard earned money on a satellite phone to be able to call the the radio station in Philly to deny that he's been uh, raped. Also, and this is just me in my head. If you were going to call Philly, why wouldn't you just call New York? That is that's another one. Why not? Hot, Hot ninety seven is the most famous radio station maybe in existence, and you right. didn't call them. You didn't, you didn't call the main one? You were like, nah, Philly's got to hear this first. I do think under these circumstances, a heterosexual male or someone who wants to be perceived as one would go through any lengths to clear up such a rumor. I can I see think that. that they would climb directly into an active volcano <laughs> and fight Balrog <laughs> if it meant, you know, to you know, clear up any, any conception. Yeah, yeah. Sure. They may have had butt sex. <laughs> so I'll burn my face off before I let somebody Absolutely. think I'm, I'm even remotely gay. It's like, I well, that's not even the main focus here, man. You were assaulted. Let's yeah, uh, yeah a crime. Let's happened. just <laughs> let's just focus on that part that you were. He's like, not at all, but I ain't gay. Should though. be in prison. <laughs> yeah. Also, who was it who told him at the airport in 
Paris? Right. Most, Were you most walking sure by, by an Auntie Anne's sure, and just yeah. heard it? Monsieur Bow Wow. Monsieur Bow Wow. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Can't Someone do at the it. gate just say in French, I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> Can't do address the rumors. And he's like, uh, I got to call Philly. I got to get on the phone with quick. Philly. <laughs> but I'm such a liar that I, even this, I'm questioning. It's, just, I really, it's not even like a logical. I just did. What? There's no logic to it. It's because also what time of day was it? Uh, unclear. I will say That's that a the big part of this. What time the, of day was it? The original uh, source, according to Snopes, of the earliest appearance of this rumor online is February twenty six, two thousand one. So Bow Wow would have been fourteen years old, I believe, by that point, right? And thus old enough, I guess, to to maintain his composure while denying his sexual assault on Philly radio stations. Also. As a 14-year-old with adults in your life, mm-hmm. why was it up to you <laughs> to, <laughs> to right? go forward and, and address your alleged assault? Yeah, because let's be honest, he wasn't making any of his decisions at this point. No. We all saw the diary episode where he had to ask his mom if he could buy the whip. And she I was about to say, wasn't no? she his manager? At the yeah. 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 Like, there's no situation... Where she's like, all right, here's a quarter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're just walking through the airport and she's like, Bow Wow, what you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She puts it on him. She this puts is it a, on him. This is a difficult position they put you in. I didn't raise no bitch. <laughs> yeah. You take this fucking quarter and you go. You take these francs and you put them in that freaky foreign phone machine. <laughs> The little ones are dimes. Put those in. <laughs> right. It doesn't make sense. No, that's 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 a lie. Sort of unrelated, but actually, uh, kid, kid, you you asked what did in fact happen to Bow Wow, and I it sort of got me asking other questions. One of the things that I started to stumble upon was a correlating but unrelated uh, video from a former security guard at the Tunnel nightclub in New York who claims to have witnessed seeing Bow Wow get sexually assaulted, not by a driver or security guard, but instead by a, and I'm quoting here, Big booty Puerto Rican chick uh, from Newark, New Jersey by Bronx Street in the projects. He says in the wait, video. It, wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. This happened at the tunnel? At the tunnel. Bow Wow is there. Assaulted by a big booty Puerto Rican woman. Uh, chick, yes. Uh, from from Newark, New Jersey, Bronx Street in the projects. How did he know that that, that that's where she was from? Uh, Thank you for asking that question. He knows that that's where she's from because he goes on to say, and I want to make sure I'm getting his quote exactly the way uh, he says it. He says, why you rape that little nigga? He says, you know, he was only 15, 16 when he came into this motherfucker. You did him dirty. But shouts out to you because you did half of the security dirty, too. Shouts out to you. I ain't mad at you. End quote. Wait. I don't want to be. <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> Yo. Is this person okay? Did they... oh. Nobody's okay here. Nobody's okay. Might they have stumbled upon this person in the projects themselves on the street? Yeah, I, I will say the corner. I will say that the interview is is up against some uh, brick brick that that looks distinctly projecting. You know what I mean? It, it looks <laughs> <laughs> it looks especially uh, uh, unkempt behind him. So, do they mean like just it you know, sounds like, like statutory a thing? Is this pegging? Are we talking about like what? I'm so I'm lost. It's it's unclear. Also she, I'm assuming, was also with half of security. He's saying that that this was such a loose woman that uh, she was willing to to suck just about any dick there, including 
half of security and Bow Wow, or he's suggesting that she sucked off security in order to get to little Bow Wow and thus uh, sexually I mean, assault him. I'm sure tons of people made that mistake. <laughs> Look, no. <laughs> that's a little bit more believable to me. Yes. Bow Wow being underage around horny, shiftless niggas and bitches, and then some stuff happening that shouldn't have happened. I believe that because, unfortunately, niggas do this type of shit, and niggas in hip hop brag about it. Yeah. You know? There are that many was... rappers who are like, oh my goodness, the. the Day my son turned twelve, I bought him his first hoe. Uh, yeah, oh, there's, oh, that, there's that. There's okay. that terrible Lil Wayne story. Yeah, I actually, I, I'm glad you brought that up. I did want to correlate that Lil Wayne story, and if we all remember, Lil Wayne is. It's during the Carter documentary. He's doing that unauthorized. Weird, unauthorized, <laughs> <laughs> where he's talking to Lil Twist about the fact that he's 15 and isn't admittedly getting pussy yet and tells him he's going to have to do him like baby and them did him and then tells the story and he uses the exact phrase where he said that he was raped at 11 and he loved it. And then he goes on to say he remembers specifically the words that baby said, suck little Wayne's dick. He says, he goes on to say, uh, you suck dick so good. You're doing all these niggas around here. Why don't you suck Lil Wayne's little ass dick? Lil Wayne famously fine now. <laughs> like, <laughs> not going through any issues emotionally, physically. Yeah, yeah his dreads aren't snapping off. <laughs> no type of arrested development going on. Yeah, Just a regular, fine. however old he is, man. Yeah, he's not hanging out with Skip Bayless for some reason. That that doesn't seem like a victim to me. Yeah, still shouting out Trump on mixtape. <laughs> he's great. It was so complicated. Yeah, yeah, I don't really have too much of a problem believing that one, even though it's still like, Sir Crack, why are you on the on the street corner talking about like some? I don't know. I'm worried about niggas sometimes. Like, uh, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, we're <laughs> it's it, if you want to feel even sadder about the video, it goes on where he he basically goes like, uh, "Shouts out to you, ma. I heard you got eight kids now. Damn, sucks to be you." He starts like rubbing her nose in the fact that she has children, despite admitting that she fucked everybody at security at Tunnel, including Lil Bow Wow. It's like, bro, I don't know what this game is, but it's you're just you're being sad and and it, you're not doing what you think you are to this lady and eight kids that lady's probably paid in New York government assistance is on I'm not mad at <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope, don't really understand what we're, we're, we're mad about I <laughs> hope there's a bright side for her I hope the highlight wasn't you know sucking 10 dicks at the tunnel that day it's like we have to consider the fact that it, dick sucking is fun for a lot of people that mm -hmm. suck dick. Mm -hmm. Sucking the dick of someone who is not of legal age is nothing to clap hands about. Sure. But <laughs> if you're just like, you know what, that is my shit, and there are <laughs> 10 of them in here, and I'm I'm going for a record, yeah. I don't feel like there's anything to shame this person about. You know? Yeah. You are in a room with a 15 year old getting their dick sucked, and you're probably on a street corner now telling their business about it. I really don't feel like anybody has any wins, you know? But, yeah. And, and more importantly, a 15 year old that you're acknowledging did not want what was happening to them. Like, it's, it's, he's not framing this as like, oh, I saw him get his dick sucked. He's saying, I saw you rape him. Why would you do that? Also, you sucked me and my friend's dick, so shouts out to you. And it's like, bro, you you got to reflect. There's no order that this is a good night. The no. police are right there. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say, uh, along the lines of our earlier sort of conspiratorial work, that does make me feel even more certain that there is an intentional effort to let the this sort of violence happen, right? It's like the police are right there. These are public conversations that just sort of get stuffed down and we're encouraged to tell people, no, nah, we're good. We'll, we'll, we'll brush that shit off when in fact you should have called the police and this should have been resolved and made our community a brighter, safer place.
And I know, like, getting pussy is, you know, oh, great. I've been doing this since I was six or whatever. I yeah. literally know people who this thing, this type of thing has happened to. And yeah. it's not fun. It has absolutely governed a lot of the ways that they look at intimacy, sex, like, vulnerability, all kinds of shit. So... I, I I genuinely don't know why so many of y'all are even allowed to to have children or be near them. Yeah. And you say these things and then you still can. You still can. You can still go hang around kids. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to no, me. It's, but let's it, talk about Lil Nas X, you know, <laughs> dressing like Jesus and twerking. Completely agreed. I don't love the use of y'all in that breakdown. <laughs> That's fair. You know what you've been doing, Bori. And, Don't and you even can't... joke like that, Langston. <laughs> That's not, now's not the fucking time for your light skin shenanigans. <laughs> fucking relax. <laughs> and I like judge by how uh, he's just on the internet talking about he he wishes baby mama would get hit by a bus or something. Yeah. <laughs> nah, my boy stay active. You know, you, you got st- he got work to do and he ain't gonna rest just because he's been sexually Look assaulted. Look at his childhood. <laughs> I will That's why say, he spent like ten years as little mama, and just <laughs> <laughs> you know, you yeah. want to just take a step back to try something you else. Want yeah, retreat. that's that's his Chris Gaines. That's his Sasha Fierce. He needed a he needed Absolutely. a step away from whatever that identity was. Mm-hmm. Damn. I will say that to the point that you're making about people not necessarily finding this cool anymore. Lil Wayne, in fact, has a interview with Jimmy Kimmel where Kimmel kind of like presses him in a weird way to talk about his sexual assault. Man. But not... Kimmel? That's what I was going to say. Who would have thought that was going to be the guy to take that to task? But they don't... That's crazy. But this is how crazy it is. They're not talking about it as sexual assault. He's just like, hey, you had sex at 11? That's wild. Tell us. Tell us what the fuck happened. Like it's and a couch bit? Like a couch bit, dog. And oh, no. uh <laughs> and then at That's one so gross. At one point <laughs> in it, gross. Lil Wayne kind of does go like, hey, it wasn't cool and it, it wasn't okay. And in fact, he also says that the girl who did it was 14 at the time. God damn it. Thus, this is not only just sexual assault, but predatory in a, a pyramid schemey kind of way. <sighs> anyway, uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, my mind just went to like at the time, like Birdman was already like you know in the streets and and running whatever the fuck, and I guess making me like you could have not involved children in. Yeah. sexual stuff like you could literally just go do whatever wild deviant stuff with whoever is consenting and you know just bring the kid a transformers or a yeah, teenage yeah, yeah. like why i don't i i i just don't think that that man has a moral code i think that 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 don't exist for for babies so there's I just think... too many niggas at large in general who are yeah. behaving this way whether they open because a lot of y'all not say nothing because you know you ain't shit but it's an yeah. alarming <laughs> amount of niggas who are like yeah <laughs> liberal you sure, y'all know. <laughs> I'm talking about the pe- the 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 listener at home people outside okay. of you're <laughs> talking to the little mamas not us yes. that's okay right <laughs> Yeah, it, none of this story feels good. I I uh, should note that I also did some some more research on a few other child stars, feeling like, well, what should we should know at least what happened with these individuals? Obviously, the Orlando Brown is a perfect sort of example of what the fuck happened to that young man. Todd Bridges talks openly about having been sexually assaulted when he was coming up on different strokes. And then I bumped into Gary Coleman and that got real sad. I don't know if y'all remember when he was on divorce court, but yeah. uh, <laughs> it ain't great. And it it then sort of like makes a even more complicated ballooning where he ends up on inside access i believe the show was and this is back when niecy nash was still a host on that show i don't know if y'all remember that yeah 
Oh, I didn't even Insider might have been what it was called, not Inside Access. But either way, Niecy Nash used to be like a gossip host. Mm-hmm. And Gary Coleman came on and they had a guest host who pressed him hella hard about his divorce, claiming uh, based off of his ex-wife's claims that he was physically violent and sort of emotionally abusive with her, that he would stomp and throw tantrums and also hit her. And the lady presses him so hard that he walks off set like Gary Coleman fully like storms off and then has an aneurysm but has written in his will that she gets all the money despite him being married to a new lady it's complicated Mm -hmm. this also makes me just randomly think of raz b oh come come on on, dog yeah Mm, the whole history of not even just b 2 k but a few groups over at tug or whatever chris stokes chris uh, stokes yeah was called it just a weird creepy sort of predicaments and photo shoots that he yeah, would you, have them in. You saw that photo shoot with IMX where they're all in the, the bed and white underwear together? Yes! And it's no, like... What? That, yeah, look that IMX up, IMX formerly immature? I don't yeah. know how to look that up. Langston? Uh, Maybe yeah, don't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bro. Olivia, look that up. <laughs> yeah. throw, it in the, throw it in the group chat. You gotta he used to have B2K do weird-ass, <laughs> like, cutesy poses piled on top of each other and shit. It was just, like, yeah. like weird stuff. But, yeah, I remember very clearly that day. Because those kinds of rumors had already been surrounding Chris Stokes. And then one day, Raz V was like, yes, not only is it true, it happened to me personally. Yeah, he's and like, then there was, was a like... video of him in the street. <laughs> like, actually, it is not true. Chris Stokes... <laughs> Never did anything to me. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> like, uh-huh. and now he's <laughs> fucked up. Like he, yeah, he's, no, he's on doing Bad good. Boys Clay. He's on Zeus. Yeah. After being on Zeus, he was in a psych ward and recorded like trying to jump out of a window or something like that. So like uh, Yeah, no, he's he's down pretty bad. And I'll say none of them are thriving. It's not like, oh, like the other members are doing good. Omarion seems the most centered, and he uh, has burned every bridge possible with, <laughs> with all the humanity around him. So I don't know that, you know what I mean? Like, they hate his guts, and that yeah, just sort of crosses his legs and prays all day. Yeah, yoga. Fuck. Damn, it's dark. Uh, <laughs> God, <laughs> God damn it. Uh, yeah, so so as far, I, I guess maybe this is where we <laughs> we dismount. I don't know. Uh, I, as far as th- this conspiracy goes, Bori, where do you stand? Where do you feel like like all of this lives for you? Listen, man, something's happening to these kids. That's that's, sure. that's where I stand. I do. I think this specifically. No, I, I, there's no way to tell, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I think it's a possibility. Am I sold on it? I guess not. But that's not particularly comforting at this moment. Mm-hmm. Kid, how about yourself? Where Where does this live for you? Um, it's going to live in the past where it belongs mostly. But <laughs> I agree. I, I don't believe it. But there is a strangeness, I think, even to your earlier point of it. The, the fact that it was such a widespread international rumor that never made an actual publication, never was on the news or anything, but has so many common parts of the guy. Like, the fact that we all say limo, we all talk about stitches, Wilt says 32. It's wild. (laughs) So that's kind of strange to me. I don't know if that speaks more to, like gossip culture or, or the way rumors spread but um they outside of that one instant it's obvious that kids especially in the entertainment industry don't seem to have enough eyes on them it's yeah. not for kids can we, i think we at some point we just have to yes people love watching Corey in the house it's just not for kids they do? we should I kid, I think. <laughs> I don't know even know why that was my go-to. That was very odd. <laughs> that was... <laughs> my boy likes what he likes. That, that no, I don't even. I'm not a Corey in the house guy. I just couldn't think of anything that I wanted one that we hadn't said yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the point is, it's not for kids. It's just not for kids. It's just not. It's just not. 
Is yeah, this- I I think whether or not this is true, there is an emotional truth underneath it that we would do well to acknowledge that at the end of the day, we are supporting and promoting a violence against these children, even if the violence is not the sexual graphic one that we we associate with Lil Bow Wow. And maybe that's really where all of this is coming from. It's rooted from a jealousy, obviously, from a bunch of people who watched a small boy become successful in a way that they couldn't make sense of. And the only way that they could think to chop him down is by saying that he got sexually assaulted And we say that fully knowing that he could have very well been sexually assaulted and didn't give a fuck. Wild. God damn. Why not just like, that nigga came (laughs) right? Because he could. Something small. Hey, I don't think he's going to grow anymore. That seems, that would have been a good guess. And you could have really landed on something. And instead they were just like, nah, fuck that. There's going to be people who say Beyonce can't sing. People say Violet Davis can't. Haters yeah. exist. But yeah. my God, of the of the things to pull out of your hater box. Damn. Christ. Well, I think we did it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any more questions about this. <laughs> like, well, it's been. I don't have can any you? more statements for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, meeting adjourned. Kid, can you tell the people uh, where they can find you and what cool shit you have going on? I don't know why you'd want to do that, but... Um, <laughs> I'm, uh, as these amazing hosts said at the top of the program, you can find me on a podcast called The Read. If you need me to spell that, then reading should probably be your first priority. So I'm not going to do that. And then, yeah, season two of Rap Shit just wrapped up. It's unhinged. It's crazy. It's wild. It's fun. So check that out, too. And then other than that, you know, just leave me alone. Don't bother me. Don't. Don't bother him. Stop it. Cut it out. You got to cut it the fuck out. Don't bother him. Uh, Bori, you want to tell people where they can find you? Uh, Cool Guy Jokes 87 on Instagram. All my info is there. Come out and see me live shows and all that. Hell yeah. Uh, And as always, you can follow me at Langston Kerman. And I've got some dates coming up. The mic drop on February 2nd. And then it was February 19th. Come to the Green Mill in Chicago and see me uh, shoot this hour. I'm really excited about. Uh, and as always, if you want to send us your own drops, your own conspiracy theories, if you want to come to the defenses of these child stars and prove, in fact, they're all healthier and more well man- maintained than the rest of society, could write it all to my mama pod at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. That's the whole shebang. Bye, bitch. <laughs>